It's C Doc again. Yo. Big up my man. Well, well, well. Yes, it's Tuesday night because I'm here. That's right. Tuesday night, y'all. C Doc again. I'm your host. C Doc. Again. As always. And uh, we're going to do this. What's up, Nat? Nat's always good, at least for. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's reminding me of the I title of the show. Yeah. 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 Seem to believe that yeah, okay. yeah. flop yeah. hiding in plain sight between the hip and the hop. So let's go. Anyway. Um Yes. Welcome to the show. Uh Yeah, we already did that. Alright, enough of that nonsense. Forgot to introduce myself, but that's all right. You you guys know who I am. If you don't know who I am, do the knowledge. I guess. Anyway, um, I'm gonna bring on uh, my co-host, the uh, the man behind the Spit Slam social media, the homie from uh, down under in Louisville, Kentucky. So chuckified. What's up? What's up, y'all? It's, it's happening, homie. Oh, nothing. So this is uh, Drink Champs the remix tonight. Mmm. <laughs> oh, so we're getting. We're getting the lunatic on too. Is that no, be no, no, no. We're not going to go with my beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy of craziness. <laughs> I don't. Even, I, don't I don't even think I want to talk about that. But you know. we're not. I was just yeah. fucking around. Yeah. Uh, so what's been going on, Doc? Man, it's uh, it's been busy. There's a lot of good things in store. We're trying to get some things done. Try to get some things set up. Announcement soon. Um. You know, uh, did I see a new single by Mr. Chuck dropped? Um, I don't know. Wasn't did it you? on Instagram? I don't know. Or was it was coming? It? I thought you posted something on Instagram. Let me check that out. Oh, that was the old. That was oh, the, that's old, the old one. Okay, Cave Manic. Okay. Yeah. Cave oh, okay. Manic. There is. Uh, there's. There's going to be new Mr. Chuck music coming. So. so yeah, I can't wait. That's why when I saw it, I just was like, "Oh, wait, yeah. what?" Yeah. There will be. That's one of the things I'm working on. So, uh, so yeah, that's in the works. Um, You're so lazy, dude. I know. <laughs> I know. Yep. Uh, speaking of somebody who's not lazy, let's. Uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, where's he going? Yeah, let's bring on our other co-host because she puts in more hours than I do. And uh, our lady from the heyday of K Day, coming from the West Side, Jennifer O. Jenny. What is? Oh, look at those nails! Throwing up the dubs. Bam! Always come correct. Pop art Pop at art. its finest. Yep. Are those the ones you had last week? Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah, I thought so. They will be changing tomorrow. Ooh. Oh yeah. So next week we we'll get new nails. Scale skulls. Yep. Yeah. Right. Some but who pumpkins. am I hearing in the background? I oh yeah. Huh? Yep. A little uh Ask Yo Mama produced by the our The Yag Fooiest of the Yag Foo. Yeah. Produced by our guest tonight, Joe City. Absolutely. Yeah. One so. Mr. Spin Forth. Yep. Looking forward to talking to Joe because uh Joe and I worked on worked on something to uh, in different capacities, and uh, didn't didn't even know that. You know? Well, I mean, I knew it, but yeah, you know, we've never we've never actually talked before. I knew so. it, but I didn't know it. Yeah, I knew it, but I didn't know it. Yeah. Oh, and Cause... by the way, talking about you know, you're lazy. Get it? Get a freaking job, C Doc. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chuck Rock, like, got two kids and running a business and. Yep. Doing all this other Team stuff. Team got... Lucci in the house. I just yeah. saw that. Team Lucci. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. it's hard. Speaking of the yag fooiest of the yag foo. Yeah. All right. Yag foul foul, y'all. Guaranteed yeah. wearing sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Sunglasses at night. Woo! 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 Looking for. 
Mm, yeah. mm. There it is. <laughs> Knackworks called you a bum. <laughs> hey, man, he calls it as he sees it. What can I say? And I felt like a bum today. I fell asleep on the couch. It's terrible. Oh, that's the best. The middle of the day, about 1, 2 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Oh, it actually it was this morning, but, you know. After chasing around that puppy. Hey, Jenny, you need to take your internet off dial-up because you're, like, grainy. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Dial Keith up. at Hillgrass Blue Billy. Yeah, what's up, man? Good to see you in the house tonight. Ah, there's a there's a Mr. Chuck single that's out. We did a cover of uh, Johnny Cash's The Man in Black. Yes. It's out there, out there, out and about on them internets. So, yeah. Interwebs. Yes, John Griffin, new music by Mr. Chuck coming soon. So interwebs why am I but yeah grainy? hey why are you huh? what grainy maybe it's just me i don't know it's like an old philco black and white eight inch my bedroom i had one of those yeah had t- two the channels hell? yep had, had to get up out of the bed and change the channel dial it's like you know fucking kids are like we got it rough like whatever yeah you produce a whole uh, fucking uh, album on your no phone idea. we had to get up change the channel you have no ah. idea. Yep. I have no idea. Oh, man. And These the tinfoil rabbit ears. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I still do that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, these kids are soft. Can you, uh, you know, um, do you not remember going down metal slides? Oh, yeah. Burn the shit out of your legs. <laughs> the shit yeah. out of the backs of your legs. Come back down, you're like, that's a second degree burn. <laughs> yep. I'm and, going and, and again. you went up and did it again. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Dump your Kool Aid out, take out ice, and put it on your leg and shut the hell up. Yeah. Pass wow. a potato salad. Or riding in the back of the um, riding in the back of somebody's truck. Oh right. yeah. Just yep. out there. Yep. <laughs> Just out there. Yep. Just out. There. Hang on, he's making a corner. Yep. Just out there. Phil Co. That's right. <laughs> Still go TV. All right. Well, yeah. we could waste time talking about old television wow. sets, or wow. uh, we could bring on tonight's guest, a producer, yeah. American hip hop producer from Virginia area. That's damn. Bio, we have been killing it with Virginia. Says. Yeah, that's what his bio. Says. That's what his bio says on Discogs. It's a very thorough bio. So we need we need to, we need this gentleman to fill in the blanks. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe City. Yeah. <laughs> What's good? Oh, yeah, you're coming in incognito tonight, I see. Oh, no, I had an accident, man. I had to cover up, you know. So. Oh, okay, got you. Got oh, you. damn. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I was willing to, you know, we could put up the thing if you want to keep your identity secret. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm getting better. Okay, good. Glad to hear it. He's lying. <laughs> He's lying, Jen. Well, thanks for doing the show. If you're yeah. under, you know, under the weather, no, no problem, man. It's my first one, so I, you know, had to do it. Mm. Oh, we're honored. Jeez. Yeah. No okay. Doubt. Hey, good to finally meet you, see that? Yeah, man. So we're gonna <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it later, but um, all right. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, or 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 we can talk about it now. I don't care. But yeah, we uh. We're, so, um, uh, for all the PE fans, uh, Joe did the original beat for "Say It Like It Really Is," oh, and wow. um, and uh, uh, we'll have to t- you'll have to t- fill us in on the production part of that. I ended up doing the music video for it. So, uh-huh. yeah. Well, okay. Like I say, it was the original track production. And once they got it, you know, their people worked on it, did some things to it, tweaked it, and, you know, got it to where they wanted it. And that's how, you know, it all transpired. You know, I didn't care as long as I had somebody on the track, you know, especially Public Enemy, you know. Yeah, right. You know, that's one of my goals was to do um, a track for a major artist. And, you know, once that happened, I got stuck because I was, that was my goal. I'm like, wait a minute, I gotta make up the goals now. <laughs> so I was, you know, I was honored to do that. You know, it felt really good. 
No, man, it was uh, – that Chuck was really – that was one of those songs. On, a, on occasion, he gets very excited about songs, mm-hmm. you know, particular songs, and that was one of them. He's like, yo, Doc, I got this joint. Yo, man, <laughs> man say it like it really is. I'm like, okay. And then, wow. And, and he was like, yeah, he was all excited. He goes, yeah, we're going to go shoot the video and – um yeah and then we and then uh i I don't remember if the the idea was always that we were going to shoot it in at niagara falls but that's where we ended up shooting it right because um i think we were on tour oh my god it's been so long man that was yeah that's what i was hearing it was like you know y'all had a little break so he shot the video between the breaks like going back and forth um touring and everything that's what i heard yeah, yeah, you know what? Uh, yes, it was. They were PE was on tour. My group, the Impossibles, we were opening some of the shows, mm-hmm. and so they we they were we played Buffalo that night. But I had to get to Buffalo early so that I could go to Niagara Falls to shoot the video. That's what it was. So, wow, because that was like 2010, I think. Yep, I just made it back to Virginia because I was in Atlanta for like two years. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, because we, because we, it was the, this is this is a rarity now, but yes, um, yeah, <laughs> the box set, the post box Def Jam box set, yeah, <laughs> and that was the that was the brand new song to kick off the box set. Yeah, and of course it it ended up on the Evil Empire of everything as well. Right, I can't hold up correctly. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Which which just celebrated its tenth anniversary, so. It's been ten years. Yeah, yeah. 10 years. And it doesn't take long. Twelve for this, yeah. <laughs> crazy man, crazy. So, That's so yeah, crazy. no, it's, it's it's great to actually finally talk to you since we right. had that, that shared experience. And um, yeah, no, that was a that was a big that was a big record for Chuck. It was a big record for the group. So, you know, big for me cool. too, and and you too, yes, <laughs> yes. but but. But let's rewind back and 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 go to the beginning, man. How how did you get into hip hop and and producing specifically? I started out as a DJ, and I would DJ in house parties around the neighborhood for free, just to get my name out. And while DJing a couple of times, I was listening to like what I was mixing. I'm like, but damn, that shit was sound dope with this, and that was sound dope with that. Let me see if I can do something like that. So it was like, I felt like something was missing in some of the songs that I was listening to, and I wanted to add what was missing. I wanted to add missing piece. So I started, you know, making beats. You know, after DJing, you know, of course. Um, Started making beats in 1984. Wow. 84. What what, what equipment were you using back then? (laughs) The first piece of equipment was the, the, the dot, the rhythm. Oh, nice! Right. Oh man. Yeah. After that was then the Sonic drums, wow. then the Elises. You know, I got with Elises when I got with Yag Fu, but before then it was just the Dot the Rhythm, a Digitech sampler, a two second sampler. Yeah. And you know that's that's how we rock. Yeah. Yep. You know, you speed up the record as fast as, as it can go and, and sample it and slow it down. Slow it down. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, man, yeah. all those tricks. Yeah, man. Yep. So that's where it started. Um, you know, doing neighborhood stuff. Um, I started with my one of my homies, uh, Cool B, and the group was called Cool B and Joe City. You know, something like a spinoff of like Airbnb and Rock Kim. So we were doing stuff in a neighborhood, and people started liking it. So then we ended up on the radio station. You know, mm-hmm. WRAP. That was like one of two all hip hop um radio stations back in the day. And we had one here and the other one was in Richmond. Okay. And so we were fixtures every Saturday morning. It was a show called Saturday Morning Live where they featured local artists. So that was the very beginning. That's dope. That's great. So, so how did that lead to uh Working on MCL and Tone T's sucker MCs, rest in peace. <laughs> okay, well, Yag Fu. Well, let me go back. Okay, 
we were in high school and that's where I met Jingle and uh, um, another guy named David Hicks. And I never took books to school. I took 12 inches. I would cut the newest 12 inches and go to school, right? So I just bring them to school. And Jingle saw me. He was like, yo, you make beats? I'm like, yeah. So, yo, I rhyme. My man rhyme. We need somebody to make beats. I'm like, all right. So come to my crib. Came to the crib, and we made, you know, just start practicing. And we booked our first studio session in Chesapeake. And it was booked under the name Rock Force MCs. And I would find out later that one of the collectors that collect Virginia hip hop said that's the oldest piece of hip hop that he could find. Wow. wow. And he was surprised that I was a part of it because that was so far back. That was, we was in high school. That was like 1986. Yeah. Wow. So it was Jingle and David. They were called Black Power, Brother Black and MC Power. MCL was David's brother, little brother. So that was our little group. And we pressed our first wax at, at Bay Music, <laughs> our, our, our recording studio at Ocean View. And uh, from there, you know, Jingle went on to college, met Damage and, um, and Spin, came back here, me and David and L were a group. So it was like a combined group. So it was separated into two because they were in North Carolina. So it was Yag Fu and DL Joe. So <clears throat> once they were in college, they were you know going to school and working on their music. So they stayed up there and did their thing. We stayed down here and did our thing. And we came up with the first track, uh, looking for a contract for Yag Fu. Okay. So that was my first introduction into the music game. Um, they were in New York uh, recording. Um, Kenyatta Bell was like the a &R. They called me on the phone and told me they had a train ticket for me to come up to produce the song. And that was something that I'll never forget. It's like, I can remember every detail of that day. You know, I'm going on a train. I'm looking at a train ticket to say Polydor Records, and I'm like, wow, I'm on my way. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just crazy. You know, it's like just just those beginning times really shaped, you know, what's going on now. Yeah. You know, and I never thought, I didn't think that it would come to this. You know, I was one of the doubters, even though I was doing the music. <laughs> I guess it was location because back in the day, we were always told that we had to leave Virginia to make it. Mm. You know, it wasn't here. It wasn't too many things here in Virginia, you know, right. not, like as far as outlets, you know, to getting your stuff heard as, as far as like a rs or different labels or whatever. So you did have to travel and I didn't have the money. I won't travel. So <laughs> I stayed here. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny though, because I mean, over the past 10, 15, 20 years, you know, Virginia, the Virginia music scene has really blossomed into its own thing. Well, when Yagfu got signed to Mercury, Kenyatta saw that back then mm -hmm. and said, listen, Virginia's going to be a hotbed. There's a lot of producers here. There's a lot of artists here. And once it breaks, it's going to break. And he was right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad to be a part of it though, and I'm glad to be one of the um, one of the elder, the elder statesmen. <laughs> yeah, you've been in game, it. You know? You've been in it for the minute, so yeah, a long minute. Yeah, that's what's up. And he's actually considered one of the original members of Yag Fu Front. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Founding member. Founding yep. member of the front. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I wanted to keep that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Damage told on you. Yeah, he's gonna tell that he's gonna tell it all. <laughs> what I don't tell, he will. <laughs> Damage told on you. Um listen, can we talk about uh the gypsies? Sure, what you wanna know? <laughs> yeah, so that, well, let's talk about that that project. I know there was a 12 inch at least, right? Was there did you guys do more than that? 
Yeah, we did a full length album, fifteen songs. Okay. Did it ever uh, did it ever come out? No. Okay. No. But the twelve inch, yeah, yeah. Gypsies, they came out. They were, I think they were the first female hip hop group. I think in this area. Okay. And probably in other areas too, but they really, they really shaped my sound. Mm. The way it all started. Um, I mean, this guy Pete, we ran a studio called Third Eye, and we started out in an apartment building, and we had two groups. We had the suspects, and we had the gypsies. Pete said, well, I'm going to work with the suspects. You work on the girls. I'm like, okay, no problem. And that was in uh, 92. No, no, 94. Okay. 96. No, 96. I'm sorry, 96. Okay. <laughs> and by 98, that's when all the wax and everything was coming out. Right. Yeah. So it was Jagged, <laughs> um, Queenie. So you will. I don't want to say her real name. Gongali. I didn't forget. I didn't forget, girl. It's Gongali. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did say Jagged, didn't I? Yes. Jagged is Key Turner now. Oh, okay. She, she goes by Key Turner now. Okay. So we really, we grew together. I mean, we worked together for like two to three years. And I kind of, you know, uh, our styles kind of coincided. So the music was just, it was just organic all the time. Mm -hmm. So once that hit and we saw what we could do, we kept trying to work at it. But, you know, as always, well, sometimes things don't work out the way you plan them to. You know, I don't want to go into detail about it, but, you know, is you know, we had yeah, a shot yeah. at something, but it didn't go down. So, yeah. Um, is that something? Is that something you'd like to revisit in the future? Like the getting those recordings out? Is that a possibility? It would have been, but I lost the ADAC tapes. Oh, damn! I didn't actually lose them. I stole them. Really? Yeah, I went to when I when I went to Atlanta. I had them stashed at one of my people's house. When I came back home, I found out the house that got shot up. They got robbed and some more stuff. It wasn't a drug house or anything. It's just one of the dudes just ran his mouth too much. <laughs> wow. And Damn. all of my music was gone. So Damn. I had, I still had that tapes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was able to pull off the album. I still had the album in the archives. Okay. And of gotcha. course, I would love to revisit the, the redrop there, but I want to talk to them. To yeah, see yeah, how yeah they of course. About of course. It, you know. Yeah. No, I said I, I it, it's it's amazing. I, I've found um, with with uh, with music we've released, you know, at Spitzlam, that mm -hmm. um, even if people didn't really know about something when it was made, you put some time on it, and it gives it this you know this kind of uh, mystique, right? And, and people get very interested in that sort of stuff. It's like, oh, here's an unreleased album from '98, and people are like, yo, what is this? You know, so I had um, a couple of cats overseas hit me up about the projects that I had did like 20 years ago, and I was brushing them off at first. I'm yeah. Like, you know, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but then after talking to Damage, he was like, yo. This dude been trying to get at you for like two years. <laughs> he said, I'm, 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 "I'm working with him now." I'm like, "Wow, okay." Yeah. So this is some serious stuff here. I'm like, "Okay." Yep. So then I had to sit down and I'm like, "Well, these cats are like in Switzerland, Sweden, Germany, and stuff like that, and they're hearing our material, and we did this stuff 20 years ago, yep. and they appreciate this stuff." Yeah. So I must have been doing something right. So if I was doing something right, I might as well keep on doing it. <laughs> Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 amazing, and, and I I love the fact that the uh, the appreciation is there. You know, right? It might not be like you know major label billions of records or anything like that, but there is a a group of diehard hip hop fans that appreciate it. 
and exactly. it's, beautiful. it's a beautiful thing, man. It is, not, and I didn't not, know it existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not to mention everything old is new again. That is true. That, that's true as well. As well, yes. It's all right. coming back. Mm -hmm. Very true. Jenny, you're coming back in style. Exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I just want to know. I, I'm going to have to go back and and creep some of those old uh, clips recordings. They might have some Joe City beats in there that Pharrell must have sent somebody over to the crib in Virginia. Oh yeah, stole, stole your shit. <laughs> I was going to say the first person to put something out that he recognizes, we know who stole it. <laughs> right. Uh. Exactly. Stole your shit. <laughs> Yo, man, I also I want to applaud you for um because Chuck Chuck D and I talk about this all the time. The we lament the loss of the girl, well, of groups in general, hip hop groups, but especially the girl groups. Mm -hmm. You know? So um so the you know, for I know it was I know it was like 98 or whatever, but still, you know, even by that point, the girl groups had kind of fallen out of fashion. And mm -hmm. lean towards solo artists. So putting out a girl group project, that's fantastic. Yeah. It was an experience, man. You know, yeah. I would have to really gear myself mentally to do it all over again, though. <laughs> Working with a bunch of girls. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, let's unpack that. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, but man. <laughs> it's a whole different animal. A whole different animal. We tend yeah. to be that sometimes, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, th <laughs> I, I think that's where, I mean, unless you get a very select group that like are all on the same page, you're going to mm -hmm. get that. You're going to get that no matter yeah. who it is, really. But see, once you're on the same page, sometimes it gets worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know how? Yeah. How? Yeah, tell us how. How does Ooh. it work? <laughs> it's like more of a button of heads because once you get to that level, it's like it's not one person is above that group, not the producer, not the 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 the, the best MC. It's like everybody is equal. So mm -hmm. it's like you know you have somebody trying to rise here. No, I'm going to rise up to your level. Okay, I'm going to rise here. I'm going to rise here. So it's always a battle. And then after all the energy is expended, you all come down, and then you agree to whatever it is, whatever it is and then you just keep working. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. So did um, did your your dealings with one Yag Fu Front stop at looking for a contract? No, they did not, did they? No. <laughs> no. Um, doing that whole process you know, after the first thing, after looking for a contract we were at Midi Studio and you know did he tell you how long it took them to record that album? He never told you? Let me tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> Two days. <laughs> no. It took about four to wow. record that whole album. Four days? Four days, twenty-four hour sessions, the whole nine. Wow, man! That's what he did it. tell you, what he did tell you was, damage told you that he fell asleep on the floor, and when he woke up, they had written, um, yeah, black liquid. Yeah, they had done black <laughs> liquid. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Damage was notorious for that. You know, back then, Damage would fall asleep at the drop of a dime. He still, he still does. Oh my gosh! He still, he still. Oh, he does. Oh man, it was like my first trip to New York when I when I was up there to record, looking for a contract. We were walking around New York and everything, and he was like, "Hey, hold up!" And we passed this brownstone that had the steps and the little banisters and everything. Are you down for a second? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> I'm like, that's my man. <laughs> the, master, the master of the power nap. Yes, sir. That's Damn, my man. like a like a fainting goat. Yeah, loud music is like. <laughs> just, 
Oh, shit. <laughs> oh man. No, you it's did not say that. A painting goat. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. <laughs> <laughs> he he <laughs> just wrote yes I do. Oh, I tried to put it up. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, y'all are hilarious. Painting <laughs> goat. <laughs> Damage knows we got love for the fainting goats in this motherfucker. That's yep. hysterical. <laughs> 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 Ooh. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead, Joe. Wow. No, go ahead, Jenny. No, no go, Chuck. Please. Well, Jenny's asking rhetorical questions anyway that she answers herself. Um, she's like, "Was that the only oh. one?" No, it was not. Oh wait, <laughs> you good, Joe? Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. So you know, you were talking about Virginia. Obviously, yeah. there were tons of people that came out of Virginia. But when you when you were coming up. And people were telling you that you had to get out of Virginia. Did you believe that? Did you see a scene? Did you know that it was on the come up? Like, what was that like for you as a producer when people are telling well, you that? Well, it's funny because my cousin was a producer, uh, Tony Walton. He was one of the producers for the Poor Righteous Teachers. Mm. So Word. I called him and told him that I made beats and that I wanted to get, I wanted to be a producer like him. He said, okay, I'll tell you what. He said, if you get the money to come up here, I'll make sure you get some work. During that time, I'm like 17, 18 years old. And I didn't like to work. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to do music. So I couldn't get the money up to go. So I, I never made it up there. So it's like in Virginia, it really wasn't. Let me take that back. When I was younger, I, I was raised in the Park Place area, and on 35th Street, we had two record record shops slash record labels. So, in this area, we had like Gary U.S. Bonds, Linus Gas, and you know stuff like that. So they have record stops, or records, um, record pressing companies, record stores, and all that on Granby Street, 35th Street, and all that. But as time went on, like four or five years later, they started disappearing. And I know it used to be a this used to be a good scene as far as like music in the sixties, like you know, it was they used to call Church Street like the little apple, you know. Hmm. But when I was coming up, I mean, we didn't like we didn't have anything to grab onto. Hmm. So of course I didn't see it. I really thought you had to leave. Yeah. Thank God for computers now. You can sit yeah. at home all day. <laughs> and and real then, quick. Oh, real quick! Shout out to Gary U.S. Bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the homie, because uh, he, Chuck, and Daddy O, and Gene Barge. We, you know, we redid uh, "Quarter to Three, his his big hit, mm -hmm. updated version a few years back. Shot the mm -hmm. video in Chicago. That was great. Good stuff. And uh, a little side note on that: my uncle used to write for Gary U.S. Bonds and Linus Guest. Word. That's what's wow. up. That's what's up. Oh, so you got it. You got it in the. In the jeans, the family jeans there. Yeah. yeah, I never knew that until I got older. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm a, part of, I'm a, I'm a part of a fraternity. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yeah, that's what's up. So, um, so over the last, you've been working consistently then, you know, uh, on, on stuff for, what the last 20 years yeah it's like it was a time well i was told that music was going to change back in 98 okay did and, can you elaborate and, on that like how change how okay well the sound of it sonically oh, okay sonically okay. you know you know like you were from boom bap and then <clears throat> the boom bap morphed into a uh, soulful type of boom bap, you know, and it's like when that age came, you know, like with the you know, like the Wu Tangs and all of that. It was, I mean, I was really into that that style, mm -hmm. and I was told it was about to change. And when it changed sonically, it's like, okay, well, let me fall back for a minute and um, 
going to the lab and just keep on creating. But I wanted to be able to create and stay relevant, even if I didn't want to do what was the norm right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just kept, you know, kept at it, kept doing the same stuff I was doing, but finding different ways to make it sound and adding this and taking away that and start playing a little more and, you know, still creating my own sound. So that has allowed me to, I guess, keep on making tracks throughout these years and the decades and everything, because when you come from Marley Mall scratch all the way up until, up until like the roots type of shit, that's a wide range right there. And then you got more after the roots, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and it's so many styles. So it's like, I got caught up in that whole wave that you had to make yourself sound this way to be recognized or to be appreciated or whatever the case may be. And I started trying and I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I got to do what I do. And if people like it, they like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. But I can yeah. guarantee you, you're going to feel it one way or another. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm a firm believer. And if you stay true to yourself, and your sound as a as a beat maker as a producer that it will find an audience somewhere you know because i think yeah. just the, the sheer belief in it because you put your all into the music you know yeah somebody somebody somewhere will find it you know like when you guys first came on right um i had the um the youtube up in the room and i hadn't got on yet and i walked in the room I'm like hold up that's my beat <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, that shit sound dope. <laughs> right? Oh man. I don't get to hear my material outside, you know, a lot. And because I'm always in, in the lab, you know. So when I hear it and it sounds like it's supposed to sound, I'm like, okay, I did that one right then. Okay, on mm -hmm. to the next one. <laughs> so what are you using now, equipment wise? Now? Yeah. The machine plus. Mm. Oh, cool. Man, I was using it. I started with the ASR 10 with Yeah, cool. I ran with that for a while until, well, to be honest with you, I didn't get my own equipment until about 2000. Oh, I, used okay. to to, I used to go to everybody's house and use their equipment, save it, record it, and go home and listen. I didn't have my own equipment. So, then after I got my computer, I started working with Fruity Loops. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I was really into that. But about two years ago, I'm like, I need a change. I mean, I like I like the instrument. I like what I can do with it, but I need a change. I need to be hands on again. I like touching. You know, I, I like hardware. You know, I don't you know computer programs. They're cool, but I like hardware. Mm -hmm. So once I got the machine plus. I think I looked at it for about three days before I even tried to mess with it. I'm like, wow, this is so beautiful. I cut on all the lights are so beautiful. <laughs> I, I, heard, I haven't heard an instrument in the joint yet. I'm like, wow, this is this would be nice. And yeah, I'm loving that right now. That's what's up. I've I've thought about it going back to hardware, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know. I'm so good. I've gotten so quick on the computer that it's just because I use Reason. It's just like, oh. eh, and I can just do it. Yeah, you know, but see, I, that, that reason. Which one? Uh, what? Which reasons do you use? Uh, I think it's twelve now. I used yeah. five for the longest. I, about to say five was the one though. Five was the one. Five was the yeah. joint, man. Yeah. I re I remember I was on five. I was still on five, and then Griff. I think when we were working on em Evil Empire, Griff mm -hmm. and I co-produced a joint, and I think he sent me. Uh, he had like seven or something like that. Mm. And um, so I, I used it to do the song that we were working on. And I'm like, fuck this. I'm going back to five, bro. You know? <laughs> five is dope, you know? Yeah. But but then I, uh, maybe, what, two years ago, three years ago, I was looking at 12, or it was like 11, just about into 12. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, all right, I'm going to try this. And... <laughs> It's twelve's dope, you know. It's dope. I'm not, you start I'm not to feel mad. handcuffed. You start to feel handcuffed after a while, man. Because it's like if you start making them effortlessly, and it's like 
okay, you, you're pushing them out. It's cool. You know, you, you know, they sound great. Right. But sometimes you want more, you know? Yeah. I will give you that. I will give and you, you that. And you're trying to find it in what you have and you can't get it. So, I mean, that was a hard choice for me though, man. I'm like, wow, now I got to learn this joint and get the yeah. sound right in this. Like I got it over here and it, it took me three months. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And I still don't know that joint, man. Oh, <laughs> I don't know it at all, but I'm making some bangers with that joint. <laughs> you know enough. I yeah, know you enough. know enough. That's yeah, the beauty sir. of it. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Well, I think it's funny because Doc was talking last week uh, on the other producer's show about using Cool Edit. What was it, seven or eight that you all were geeking out oh, about? Oh, no. Cool Edit. I, we still use Cool Edit 96. 96. Wow. To, to wow. bring samples in. Yep. Man. Yep. Oh. Do you ever use Adobe Edition? Yeah. Um, it's been a while, but I tr- I tried it for a while. It was, it was I just want it was just one it was just one Adobe Edition, the CS five point five. Okay. Mm. That was the one that I was always using, but it was a cracked version. And yeah. then I lost it and I couldn't never get it back. But that was the only one that I could use to take the vocals out of all the samples. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Trust me. Oh, it was cool. clean. It was super really? clean. Yes. Wow. Huh. But, oh man, I missed that shit. <laughs> there, yeah. yo, man. I th- there's a there's a there's an app, but mm-hmm. I found a website that does a similar thing, and they got the this. Um, that I've been messing around with and it ain't, it's not perfect, mm. but you can get some interesting results and where it'll you it uses AI, you mm. upload a song and it uses AI to break down the tracks. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one it has, um, I'm not going to say the name of it, but you can have the name of it. <laughs> uh, say what? <laughs> I said I got it saved somewhere. I don't remember the name of it yeah. anyway, but yeah. You can have the bass line, you got the drum pads. Yeah. I yeah. 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 Matter of fact, my man um Uncle Chi told me about that. And I'm like, yo, this shit is dope. Okay. It is. It yeah, is. It's dope. And it and I like it's like I said, it's not perfect. I but I have a feeling it's gonna get better. Yeah, and, but I've gotten some really interesting results out of it. I'm just like, yo, bass lines seem like it does oh, yeah. bass lines real well. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Which is yes, which is sir. crazy dope. So, yeah, yeah man, it's uh, it's just amazing. Shit right. is amazing. Hey. Jenny, Jenny. Oh, wow. Look up Jenny. <laughs> She's frozen. She's like in uh, Madame yeah, Tussauds yeah, Wax Museum over there. Oh, I thought she was reading something. It looked like she was reading. Was I? Oh, it out of a hat here. You had what? I'm trying to pull a rabbit out of a hat here. Oh, you know. And all and all you get are views. I don't know. What did you, did you have a question? No, <laughs> I didn't. Hey, not. watch me pull a rabbit out of the hat. Mm-hmm. Looks, Looks like, like you don't know my own strength. That's right, man. I I love that you you have the machine. Like I've seen it in so many magazines and catalogs. I I just like looking at catalogs. I don't even know how to use any of that shit. But the machine was one of them. And I was like, that thing looks fucking amazing. Man, it's cool. I love hardware. Man, me too, man. It's like I I forgot how much I did love it, you know, because I was working with Fruit Loops for so long, and then I got the hang of it, and then I started making Fruit Loops sound like the SR10. Mm-hmm. So people were they weren't believing that I was using Fruity Loops. So I had to show them. I'm like, yeah, I'm using Fruity Loops. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that machine, man. Oh my God. Machine plus. Because the machine is that's a whole different animal. You know, the machine is like, you know, you hook it to a computer, but the machine plus is a standalone. It, uh-huh. it you can hook it to the computer, but it's a standalone, just like you got an SP or something. Wow. Okay. I just, take it, I I mean, as long as you got you got internet, internet connection somewhere, you go in a coffee shop, put on headphones, make a beat. <clears throat> wow, that's dope. That's dope. And then and then it just exports out of that. Um, you save everything to the SD card, and okay. then when you, want, when you can export it, and then um, hook it to the computer, and that's how you um get everything. Get everything. Oh wow. boy, yeah. we are geeking out now, dude. I mean, think about that. All the fucking stuff you can put on an SD card. 
Like it's nuts. Man, SD. I mean, I was I was still stuck at the floppy disk. I ain't even I didn't know they use cards anymore. I'm like, <laughs> what's this? Yeah. I pulled it out like, oh shit, it's a card. <laughs> I put it back in the joint. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All used right. to get like what used to get one beat on a floppy disk, you know? She nah. See, this is what we did, right? Okay. When we used ASR Tim, right? When we was at Third Eye. See, um, Knox used to work with ASR Tim too. Mm-hmm. So he left us a kit, drum kit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that one disc, drums. So we didn't have to save any drums. Ah. So we could save two or three different songs on a disc and just use the drum, you know, just, you know, interchanging and stuff. Right. Did a lot of work. Yeah, wow. That's crazy. That's dope. That's when you had to work for the music. Yeah. And see, that's why I, if you work with the music back then, you can appreciate it now. Yeah. They they did make it easier for the for a novice or whatever, but if you were the actual producer and you were back in the day with the one inch tape and splicing and cutting and all of that stuff and making tracks and you're in it now, it should be a breeze. Mm-hmm. Yep. It should be a breeze. I actually, yeah, so, so yeah, is it clumsy? Uh, audio tape and make loops by pressing pause. Yeah. Uh, that's how tape. I started. Yeah, that's how I started too, man. <laughs> I actually want to so, do that. I want to go back and make a, a new pause tape. Oh, oh man, the pause tape was the shits, man. Yeah. Oh, Yo, man. That was, a, that was the challenge of all challenges. We used to have, Remember? we did. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you oh. go when we did that, we had four turntables and four tape decks. Right? Wow. So we had it going. So we had everything we needed to to go on that one that, that one loop yeah. and kept on repeating it. We, we get it, record to the next one. Dub it, dub it, dub it, dub it. <laughs> you know, the trick was if you did it too much, you got a whole lot of air. Yep. <laughs> yep. That was it. You gotta do it just right. Yep. You had to get as le- as the least the least amount of tracks as possible. Yes, sir. Keep, exactly. keep it clean. I forgot dude. about the pause tapes, man. Yeah, Jesus. Man. <laughs> I've been around a Remember? while, man. <laughs> Remember yes, when I said I was trying to pull a, a, a rabbit out of my hat? Yes. Mm-hmm. Hit the button, Chuck, because presto. <laughs> Sleepy Joe in the house. <laughs> and he's asleep. <laughs> the secret member. No, I, don't know. I can't do it. I can't it's do it. Yeah. What's up, brother? Yo, what man, up, I feel like I feel out of place. I feel like I'm not right. Right. <laughs> right. We should all <laughs> here. Since we're at there. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I came in because I wanted to talk to y'all about that interesting conversation you were having about online AI websites that split tracks into yes. different scenes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if any of y'all have the Yeezy player. Uh, I don't have it, the STEM player. But I got mm-hmm. a chance to play around with it, and uh, it does that same thing. Mm-hmm. So okay. instantly earlier this year, I was real interested in that too. I remember what you were talking about, Joe, how we used to pull those samples and how clean they were when you would take out the vocals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on, um, but, uh, and then you sparked me too. You were talking about the ASR 10. So uh, it's, it's no promotion, but there's this guy online that makes an app that does all of that on the phone. In fact, you know, I did this Thessasonic remix on my phone with this app. <laughs> And you can even hook up your phone. You can hook up your machine to your phone and use this app too. Uh, but it's called Koala. Wow. But it's, oh, yeah. it's like it's uh, K O A L A. It's a sampling app that's like a little mini uh, MPC in your phone. But it's so fun because it's got all of these integrations that are built in that will give you the ability to do that. Like, you know, you take bring in a sample, it'll strip it in exactly what you said, Joe, the drum, the bass, the vocals, mm. and like a other. And mm-hmm. it's really yeah, oh, yeah. The reason why I brought it up is I was aware that earlier this year they had done a, it was a paper. Uh, it wasn't even this year. It was probably like a year or two ago. It was like a paper on either GitHub or Google uh, 
uh and um where this is a free um this is a free technology that's offered so it being integrated in the software is based off of that same software that was released several years ago so many apps and and uh and uh many so many different softwares have integrated that software well in but whatever algorithm they use for the koala one sounds quite similar to what we used to do back in the day that's why i popped in here to tell you about it joe uh, okay for everybody bro. yeah that's dope yeah i'm gonna have to check yeah. that out yeah k-o-a-l-a i i yeah I literally the ultimate made... pocket sampler well, you know, for me, I hate social media. So, like, I like it. I'm not in the, I'm not in the social media. So, you know, my daily, you know, hop on the phone is probably, you know, what everybody else is, quick scrolls. But most of the time, I just get on there and make beats. And it's so, you know, the secret part is, is that, you know, we came up, remember beat fishing, joke where we said we were going to go online, beat fishing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like beat fishing 2022. You go online, you find samples on TV or whatever. You can quickly sample it, mm. especially online because, you know, uh, one of the best things about having an Apple phone, but uh, Android phones have come a long way. But back in the days, they used to have a terrible delay. If you're doing any mm -hmm. recording, you make it. Well, a Apple phones have like lossless sound that's like instant. So you can record, record songs and stuff on it. Yep. Uh, but ultimately, um, it delivers with you being able to record things right off of your screen. So if you go to YouTube and you want to screen record, you can instantly import, you know, any samples from YouTube in. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. amazing. If you guys can see some mm -hmm. of the art I'm doing, it's been crazy. So you combine your artwork and your music together, and you can create a product really fast right off of your phone. Unless you wow. see, like me, like, you know, it takes me about a little time to <laughs> Well, see, I'll probably be mad because my phones are too fat, man. I I got I need, I need something big. Huh? You say your song's too fat to, to fit in Yeah, man. But they got terabytes now to hold up now. I don't know. Your song might be fat, but if you a terabyte to stack up to a to the to the uh to the ozone layer in paper, so you, you, <laughs> you just uh, so, just hook up the run the machine into your phone. There you go. Yeah. yeah. What I'm saying, like, here's the yeah. thing, like, for it's the quickness of it, it's the ability to go from inspiration to full product within minutes. Yeah. Oh. And wow. it, it, oh, it's trapped, shit. Yeah, you could get all the kicks and the snares and everything. You know, you can export them out. So you can export them out as loops. You could do sketches. Um, it's the same thing as me doing like a lot of my demo stuff I do on my phone, but it's like light years beyond what we used to do. And then you can do they got an app for pause button tapes too. It's crazy. Uh, Seriously? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody of course they do. I was thinking about doing my top oh my 10 God. apps on, on uh on 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 uh on mobile phones or something like that. But you know, I don't wanna I never wanted to be a, a YouTuber, but I feel like somebody needs to know this crap. No, huh? yeah, definitely. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for the uh I really appreciate heads it. Up, D. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, sure, no problem. I gotta shout out Joe. Of course, he is integral in my ability to make beats to this day. Oh, uh, uh, Spin, Jingle, and and Joe City are the most influential. Everybody talks about all these other beat makers, and of course they were influential. But me being at a radio station, I worked at the radio station all the time. But uh, I only have like Joe. I had like a a. a I think it was a Newmark uh, mixer with a, a, a three-second sample on it as well. So all the stuff that I started off doing was the exact same thing. But uh, through through Joe and Jingle, we got a chance to record with Matt, Randy Mellon in, in Midi's recording studios. And they have been working for a while. So I got a chance to learn about, you know, uh, using the board, uh, tracking, mixing, sampling, catching the sample at a certain rate, using creativity, playing live instruments. All that came from the studio and all that came from those guys because they had already put out those records. I hadn't I had met plenty of people in North Carolina at the time uh, when I met Joe. Um uh, who you know claimed they were gonna come out with a record and all that stuff? It used to irritate me as a, as a radio DJ because I'd be like, I could feel like they were faking. But uh, Jingle was the first person that came directly to me, you know, by proxy through Spin with uh, with a a a label 
uh, and their records. And it was dope. And I was just like, wow, this is like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is what I believed could be possible. And so when I met them, it was it was over after that because they all of their creativity took us to another level. So you gotta give props to Joe because without Joe, there wouldn't be a Yay Food friend. Ah, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Appreciate that, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no doubt, bro. And I know he got stuff. I know your guys got new singles. Finn got a single that's coming out with you. I know. And I know you got new stuff in the future. So I already know, bro. Like I like you said, you said something super wise. Like there's people out here. They really want, you know, the sound that we still got. And you've ele- elevated, you know what I'm saying? So mm. yep. at the end of the day, yeah, I they got to hear it. Yeah. You're right. And they're going to hear it. No doubt. Yep. You well, I just popped in here. I just popped up in here. As y'all can tell, I'm out here in the dark. I was outside. It's cold. They got a snap, <laughs> cold snap hit. But I don't want to take away. I just want to appreciate y'all, and I can't wait to hear that spin. And and, and Joe City, it sounded dull. I heard bits and pieces of it in the beginning. So, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we'll play it again here at, towards the end of the show. So, oh yeah, and shout out to you, C Dot, of course, Jenny, so Chuck, even though he disappeared on me once again. Recurring <laughs> 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 theme. He always, you see, Joe, you don't know. Every time I pop up, I'll be like, Yo, what up, Chuck? You be gone, gone. <laughs> you know, I don't know where like clockwork. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you, D. Probably when it's it was like Chuck. You got oh, look, 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 look. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Good to see you, Damage. Stay warm yeah, out there, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. Good to see all of y'all, of course. And Joe, of course, you know we're gonna link and shout out to everybody in the chat. I'm out. Bye, right, bro. <laughs> Sleepy Joe, ladies and gentlemen. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> the thing you go. Yep. <laughs> the yeah. Yeah. So Joe, what um t- tell us about what you got coming up. What are you working on? What's what's good? Huh. What's good? Everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um well I got a project that I haven't released yet. Um I did get a few pieces of wax pressed up on it. It's called Still Alienated. Okay. And um, it's on my label above the underground. And it is a compilation. It has various artists on it. Um is that, is that of, a, can I can I interject and say, does that have anything to do with is like a sequel of source to the alienated individuals project? Exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly. Oh, you, oh damn, you know about that too. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to try to do as much you research as homework. I could, bro. You this know? is your homework. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it is a spinoff of that because when I thought about it, I'm like, if I do another compilation, it has to be a spinoff of that because of what we were talking about earlier about how big that was for me overseas. Mm-hmm. They still want that CD. I can't deliver it right now. Oh, wow. Okay. I can. I got I got to get one song fixed and then I can deliver it. But they really want that joint. So I did this one and some of the members that was on the first one is on this one. Dope. Wow. Okay. You know, so that's like 20 years later. So I'm, you know, like I said, Key Turner, she was with the Gypsies. She's on there. Yep. Um, Mo B, um, B Bully Breeze, he's on there. Um, also, having a couple of new people. Well, not really new. It was a group called the Misfits back in Philly. I don't know if you remember them or not, but that was Eddie F's group. And yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. One of the guys, uh, Dre Mello, he moved to Virginia and I've been working with him, but his name is Uncle Chi now. We already did a uh, full length album, we, uh, we already got the second one ready to go. Oh, and wow. the, thing, the thing about me, man, I can record anybody, I can record anything, but I just don't want to record anything. It has to have, you got to have meaning to it. Yeah. You know, some kind of message. It has to have a message now. I mean, uh, um, I've done the gun joints, I've done, I've done the drug joints, you know, all types of music, but it's like that stuff that you can talk about every single day, it's not going to change. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's not going to change your perspective on anything. It's going to keep you locked in that joint. So I'm like, I want to expand. Yeah. So that's why I link with Uncle Chi. That's why I link with Key Turner. Mm-hmm. That's why I link with Yag Fu again. I need a change. So with doing stuff like that, it allows me to be myself and not be 
put in a box somewhere where you got to do this type of track for this or this type of track right here. I'm trying to make everybody conform to me. I want them to want what I have. I'm not trying to give nothing out. Yo, check on my beats. No, you come check me out. Yeah, that's what's yeah. up. So, so that's what's in the works right now. And I want to get it in the right in the right scenario before I even release it. So, yeah. of course, you guys can get it first. So, this, ah, yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Shoot, me, shoot me the emails and I'll send the we transfers tonight. That's what's up. <laughs> We'd love to check it out. I'm gonna Word. put that in the private chat now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, the alienated individuals joint had uh, one of my favorite tech specialist songs on it, Future Shock. Man, that was one of my favorite too. Yeah. And I remember recording that at my studio. Um, I had a studio called Area Fifty One back in uh, what year was that? She's ninety ninety eight. Ninety. I was with Third Eye. Left third eye, went to fast tracks about two weeks, and then one of my homies talked to this dude and he built a studio for us. I'm like, oh shit, he built a studio, mm-hmm. bought all the equipment. Wow, I'm like, oh shit, okay. So that's I did that for like a couple of months, and then after that, I went underground. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do it. Yeah, man. Come back with a vengeance. <laughs> um <laughs> did you did you collect records? Yep. Do you still have them? No, what happened? The records that I had, I was moving and I had them in my, in my man's trunk. Right. And he parked in a no parking zone, they towed his car. Oh. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Damn. I was gonna say, was this the same guy in Atlanta? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh man. man. I've had <laughs> that was the first instance, you know, and the car got towed. He never got the car back. I lost all my records in the trunk. The second instant instance happened. Um, I was staying with my brother, and we had a garage, and I had put all my records in the garage. Something that went down with the house. We left the house, had to get some things fixed, and left the records in the garage. Somebody came by and stole those records. And one of those records that was in there was the Misfits that I told you about. They went online and sold that joint for three thousand dollars. Oh my shit! Damn. I was hot, and I know Uncle Chi was hot (laughs) because he the one that let me hold it, and I felt so bad, man. Wow, that's fucking crazy! Shout out Uncle Chi. Yeah, that was <laughs> Uncle Chi. Sorry, your record got stolen. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so where are you pulling? Where are you pulling samples and stuff from these days? I mean, well, my other brother DJ Stress, all the records that we've ever had, he converted to MP3 form. Hmm. Every single piece of wax. Wow, that's crazy. Damn. Every single piece of wax. And I have that on a hard drive. Now, that's over 120 gigs of music. Wow. From 1950 all the way up until now. Wow, that's dope. You need to carry that hard drive around everywhere you go. Don't leave it anywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't listen. Yeah. Don't it's leave it at your friend's me. house. Oh, no. Nobody <laughs> knows I have it. No friends. No hard, no you don't know what's going on. So. <laughs> <laughs> and no sir. Shout out to DJ Stress. That's yeah. my man. That's that's what's up. That's so, I, so are, are you interested in buying records anymore? Were you ever like a collector? Yeah, I mean that's what we did. We collected all types of records to sample, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, we, if we found something that was in like mid condition. We were careful with it, then put it back in the, in, the, in the plastic and everything, and put it up. But it's like, if I if I was to do that, I would just have to collect them to be collecting them because I don't I don't use a turntable anymore. Right. You know, and that's when I had a mix of the turntable. I can go to the records and pull them up. But see now, it's just going to the MP3 and chopping them up and do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So the only, the only thing I do I collect hip hop. Like Virginia hip hop or some, mm. um, if like 
Like if let's say PE drops something and it's like all digital, or they make a couple of pieces of wax, I'm getting the wax. Yeah. You know, I yeah, buy yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I yeah, have to. That's that's preserving the art for me. Yeah. Start yeah. a new collection, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, nah, that's dope. All right, go ahead, Chuck. If I had, I'm sorry. I'm... I wouldn't say anything. Nerding, I was nerding out oh. over records. Do you have a question? No, I was ag- I was agreeing. So, oh, okay. <laughs> I, but I will I will ask questions. So, I was going to make a joke. You know, you were talking about <laughs> you you were talking about you know putting new music out. It has to have a message or whatnot. I was going to make a joke. You know, there's really nothing going on in the world where you could get any kind of message out. But <laughs> what right. what what type of stuff are you you kind of alluding to with this new stuff? Like what context wise? I guess you don't have to spill the beans, but you know, because you you kind of alluded to the fact, you know, everybody's done drugs, everybody's done yeah. guns, you know, all of that. Like, is it more socially conscious or is it just more socially you know, conscious, for- uh, uh, uplifting? Mm. Okay. Um, somewhat, I, I want to say I don't. Well, kind of like spiritual, but not. But it just, I guess. You could say cosmic. Okay. You know, it's like so I'm trying to give you give it to you without giving it to you. No, I once, understand. You, once you hear it, you was like, oh mm-hmm. shit, now I get it. You know? Okay. But it's self empowerment, man. Because it's like a lot of people don't have like a lot of people have low self esteem, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of mental issues and everything. To tackle something that's going to give somebody something to be uplifted about, you know, it's too much bullshit going on, and everybody want to keep on making like depressing shit. <laughs> right, right. I don't want to make depressing shit mm-hmm. because I didn't grow. I didn't grow up on depressing shit. That was it, man. That's what that's what attracted me to hip hop in the first place was the the, the, the help variety help me recognize mm-hmm. self worth and and self worth. Yeah. Like, oh shit! Yeah, that's me. Oh shit! Right. Mm-hmm. It's like you can relate. I mean, of course. I mean, you know, it's some people that can relate to the other stuff. You know what I mean, more yeah. power to them. Yeah. But you know, I've I've lived some of that. But I'm not a gangster or nothing like that. But I've been around a lot of shit, and I choose not to be around shit like that. Yeah. You know, I don't like the energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I'm big on energy, man. Yes. So do you think that comes with age? Did you feel that way always or was there Fuck like no. a switch? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, exactly. It's crazy, right? Because I'm like, I'm like, when I look at myself now, right, I'm like, damn. 10, 15 years ago I wasn't like this. You know, I didn't give a fuck. You know, mm-hmm. but I think you know, life, you know, life instances, new life, you know, babies, that shit changes you, man. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna continue doing this, now you know, I got a family and this that and other. How is that gonna match? I don't want that bullshit around my family. I want to right. make music that my kids can listen to, you know, can play loud and they can, you know, just enjoy it. You know, not have to worry about oh, parental advisory. You know, mm-hmm. right. I mean, some songs. I mean, still, I mean, I still want to be an adult and still get my groove and all that, you know, and do shit like that. But sure, that's just to get that shit out. But mm-hmm. I really, really. Really, you know, I changed, man. You know, I had I had a daughter six years ago. Everything changed. Mm-hmm. Everything changed. Yep. And then I had a son three years after that, and just had another son. Oh, ah, wow. congrats! Thank you. Congratulations. So it means a whole lot more to me to do music like that. When I got young ones like that, I can't do music. I can't do that bullshit now, man. That's yeah. cool, man. <laughs> yeah, no, nope, I totally get it. Yeah, and, and you know what? Kids are a great barometer for what works. Listen, I'm <laughs> I'm making music, and my my wife goes in another room. She was like, "He's in there popping to what you're doing. He's he really liking it. Oh shit! I oh, got a hit. Yep. If the babies <laughs> like it, if the babies <laughs> like it, rock with it. Yep, <laughs> that's awesome. Yep. Yeah, man. Yep. 
I made. I remember I made a beat once, and Davey was like, he was a, my oldest. He was a baby at the time, and he was just like, he's like, Mah! he started fussing. I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> not even fucking with this one anymore. <laughs> not even yeah, worth it. Do that shit, no. Be a crowd, fuss or something. Oh, let, let a high pitch come in or a bad note. Mm. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Go ahead. What you know about this? Okay, I'm gonna right. All right. Listen, yep. we we have a uh, we have an interstate that runs around the city, like most cities do. And mm. to get my kids to go to sleep, because motherfuckers never slept when they were babies, <laughs> I would just drive around the car because mm. they would fall asleep in the car. Uh-huh. And the only joints that they would fall asleep to is from the blueprint. <laughs> I just had the blueprint on loop and just drove around. And I was Yay. like, okay. I, I don't know if it was the bass, you know, it just kind of lulled them. You're talking about Jay Z's blueprint, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. If you, it's like if you listen to all of the stuff that came out before the blueprint by Jay Z, when the blueprint came out, that shit sounded totally different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything you felt that shit, mm. you know that's what it was. You know you felt the baby felt it in their soul, man. It was so yeah, familiar. Did. That's what it well, was. Unfortunately, they don't like hip hop now. They listen to all this pop shit. <laughs> hey, yeah, well, <laughs> well, see, I mean, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we'll go there for you. <laughs> What do you hip hop? I mean, yeah, there is some hip hop out there, some hip hop out there, but mm-hmm. what's out there now? That's not hip hop. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, there's a lot. No. That's we, we, yeah, we well, we and you know what? We always talk about. I also always like to make the distinction of, of what is pop music. Whether mm-hmm. they, they might be rapping, but it's it's pop music. Yeah, but. And there's a lot of, but there is a lot of hip hop. You just, it's not shared, you know. And mm-hmm. I think it's, I think it's our exactly. Job. It's our job to spread the word, you know. Yes, I'm glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got to man. We got to let the people know, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, cause there's it, nothing worse than than rolling up into Spotify on release Friday, and I don't know any of my. <laughs> like, I'm just searching right? for a name I know. I'm like, no. <clears throat> But yeah. it's like that even no. if you even if on on like Instagram if you look at allhiphop.com, you know, little scratch and sniff got arrested for and I'm like who? Little scratch and sniff. All, allhiphop.com <laughs> is everything but hip hop. You know? Right? <laughs> but it's oh, like, Jesus. you know, little little scratch and sniff and his and his and his cohort, you know. All right, Dre like, Mays. Dre Mays is checking us here. No, so I'm, not even, no yo, I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not even trying to be crotchety or whatever. I'm talking. Oh about no, I don't think you that, are. People that because they're young cats. There are young cats coming up that do music, you know, from their soul, and they're yes. trying, and 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 they do it for a reason, not to get on the radio. That's not mm-hmm. why they're doing the music. They're mm-hmm. doing it because they got to do the music, you know. And that's what I'm talking about. That's some, that's the stuff I'm talking about that I appreciate. Don't, but don't count out the old heads either. You know, right? Wait a minute, beat nuts right. put out a new joint. That's why I threw it up there. I was like, I didn't hear about that. <laughs> Me either. Okay, do, I guess do I gotta tell go. clumsy. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go look for that. Damn. Okay. And Dre May's like in that scratch and sniff. Right. <laughs> uh, Jenny dropped. I'm gonna use that. That was good. That's hilarious. Yeah. A little scratch, a little scratch, and, scratch sniff. and sniff. <laughs> Dude, I love scratch and sniff. Let's be honest. Like when you got your, your papers graded back in the day, they put you a little sticker on there. Oh, and yeah. Be a scratch and sniff. It'd be like grape. And you're like, yeah. back there. Yep. Oh, so good. No, Just there's... like this little thing used to smell like strawberries. Oh, uh, I love those things. What does it smell what like now, of... dare I ask? Now it smells like. Dog ass. Nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dog ass. Yeah, my daughter's exactly. had. She went hilarious. to one of those, uh, one of those uh, build a bears, and she got this uh, green, like it looks like a Hello Pony or something. I don't know what the fuck it is, but she put this uh, little it, strawberry smell. You got those smell. completely mixed. Hello. Whatever. Pony. My little, my little pony. Hello. 
I don't my know. little kitty. What? Yeah, it's got <laughs> my little pony. kitty. Yeah, hello <laughs> pony. But it's got this strawberry scent in it, and we got it for when she she's thirteen. We got it for when she was two, and that thing still smells. Like I'll go into her room and still like, stinks. Yeah, well. oh, it smells so good. <laughs> Smelling the youth, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, Hence, man. little scratch and sniff. That's um, it. What really are we going to go back there again? Putting your stickers on the trapper keeper. Okay. Um, straight. I say just so that we can see that he's keeping it alive. I say you drop Spin's new single. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We will do. I'm going to play that. I'm going to play that right when we get to the end of the interview. So, um, but I did want to, uh, Oh, okay. So the song was from 2014. Okay. I was going to say, I didn't know there was new Pete Nuts, but it's uh, it's it's new to right? us. There you go. Gray um, Mays talking about he's telling his age. It's in his, it's in his screen name, 73. So you push yeah. him at 48. Yeah. Uh, okay. 48, Still older than all of you. So. so so Joe, you were talking about the, the guys in Europe. Is it the Chopped Herring Records guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they released a, a couple of the Third Eye Entertainment compilations. Is that what it was? Yeah. One was um already released. The second one we only had on CD. You know, like it was pieces from um it was supposed to be called the next millennium. And before we could get it put out, we had um shut it down and we had went our separate ways. You know, he went and got another studio and I went and did Area fifty one. But we split the CDs up and you know this I guess just for uh, mem- memory pur- purposes, I guess. So that never saw the light of day. Gotcha. Until Chopped Herring got it. Until Chopped Herring mm-hmm. got it. So yeah. yeah. So those are. I wonder. I wonder if they still have them. If they're still in print. But yeah. So you should have a couple left. Yeah. I made sure I got mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's what's up. All right. Well, yeah. So okay. So anything else you want to talk about? You got coming out, or we'll just keep. We'll just keep waiting. You keep us posted. I can keep you posted. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna send. Um, oh, yeah. It, um, ah. huh. <laughs> working with a um with um Fleet Entertainment, Fleet Entertainment. Okay. And we do have um, an EP already done uh, with one of the members of Fleet, uh, Joseph Sincere. Um, we're just looking for the right time and the right place to drop it. Okay, and um, I'll be sending you a copy of that, along with my my album and Uncle Cheese album. So you'll be getting three projects from it. Dope. That's what's up. Looking forward to it, and we will. And then when you let us know the time is right, we'll get it up on uh, on Chuck's rap station. You know, we'll get some of those joints in in rotation on there. And, good luck. Uh, good luck. Yeah, get get some support and try to get the word out. I really appreciate it, sir. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> All right, right, so real quick before we let you go, we're gonna do the we're gonna do the uh, I gotta get some new ones, but we're gonna do the Yo MTV Raps game, Yo Uh-oh. MTV Rap card. So what the hell? Okay, so yeah, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a pull a couple random Yo MTV Raps cards that I have, and then you uh, you expound on that any personal remembrances or uh, opinions or whatever. Um, so the first one that came up is Terminator X. What do you say? Uh... Terminator X? Bro, oh, when you say Terminator X, I think about his first album. Ah, Valley mm. of the Jeep Beats. Valley of the Jeep Beats. I remember, uh, <laughs> homie, don't play that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, one, yep. that album, man, that was one of my favorite albums, man. For some reason, I just loved that shit, man. It's it's it was, it's it's really dope and really underrated too. Underrated, man. Very underrated. Yeah. Yep. Wow! Shout out Terminator. Gosh Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, that was probably the first time anybody had done something like that, right? It I mean, was a ton of yeah. DJs or producers doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I that think you're right, Chuck. Yeah, ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. All right. Next one is the God MC and his DJ Eric B and Rock him. Mm. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for Eric B and Rock him, man. I probably wouldn't have took it as far as I've taken it, man. Mm. 
Wow. They 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 actually put that battery in my back to, to want to do this shit, bro. Wow. They were the ones because I'm listening. I'm like, yo, when Father Leader came out, you can't tell me anything. They did that joint on like a 16 track at the house. <sighs> you can't tell me anything. I listened to it and everything. So I'm like, okay, they did that at the house and that shit went gold still. I'm like, okay, okay, you don't really need a big studio. So I'm just right. thinking all these different things. So you can't yeah. do this shit in the house. So they showed me a lot of things with those two or three albums that they came out with, man. Yeah. All yep. the my favorite MC. Yeah. This is one of the best. Mm-hmm. Um the best to ever do it. All right. I, this uh, this card's funny to me just because it was the uh the uh uh era where they were out of the Adidas stuff, but run DMC. In the uh, back from hell era, I guess. So the mm. outfits Holy are kind of goofy. Holy crap! But... Yeah. Wow. Run DMC. That's the first rap album I ever bought. Which one? Which yeah. one? <laughs> the first one. The, uh, the, self, the self-titled one. The Run DMC. Yeah, self-titled. Yeah, Run DMC. Yeah. The, the first out. Uh, the first rap album I ever bought. And I remember playing that shit for a long time before the radio got a hold of it and that felt so good <laughs> being up on it before everybody else yeah, yeah. I, I used to thrive on that man having something before everybody else had it but the card you pulled up I mean, I, that raising hell I mean, ah. <laughs> oh. mm. all right mm. <laughs> that's all I can say yeah they were trying to they were trying to fit in with the with the era I didn't want them to do that. I don't. Yeah. Nobody I didn't did. Do I don't think. Yeah, nobody did. <laughs> nobody wanted them. But to do listen, that. I'm. I'm going to tell you right now. I'll put this remix up against almost any of them. Back from Hell remix featuring Chuck mm-hmm. D and Ice Cube. That yep. shit is. Oh yeah. Hard. Yeah, that is. That is. I, that was I, the only one I could get with too. I yeah. think that was. I think that was the course correct. Yeah, I think yeah. they were like, uh, we yeah, messed we up. We got to do something out. quick. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Get yep. Chuck and Cube in the studio stat. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then I just thought, so uh, I'll bring it up again, but Paramount Plus is kind of dope because they have like 50 episodes of classic UMTV raps uh, up there. And I watched <laughs> one today featuring Heavy D and the boys. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, shout out to Hev. Yeah, shout out sure. to Hev. Man, that Heavy D and the Boys, that was fun to me. That, that, that music was fun to me. It just made yeah. you feel good, man. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, it's like you didn't have a care in the world when you listen to Heavy D and the Boys, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, so that's, that, that's what I remember from them. So, I mean, no, no thug, thug type shit. No drugs. No, none of that. It was just straight life. Yeah, you know. And I love shit like that, man. Because yeah. I mean, it's easier to relate to. Yes. Yep. And, and he was easy. good at it. Hey, man, very great good. rapper, dude. Yeah, very great. Very good. Very at underrated. It. He was. But, he was such a dope live performer. Mm-hmm. I never got to man. see him live. Oh, he was. I I saw him two or three times, and he was fantastic every time. It was one every song time. that he did, man, that I I really hadn't paid attention to, and recently started listening to it about like a couple of months ago. He did a song called Delilah. Mm, mm. Wow, that shit is so. I'm like, what? And I'm I'm like, man, I, I was like, I'm mad I didn't you know really get into it when it came out, but. That joint right there made me see shit in a whole different light. Now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, all right. Yeah. I see where it's going. <laughs> Hev was Hev was dope. Yes, sir. Hev yeah. was so dope, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rest of beats, Hev. Rest um, of beats, Hev. Real, real, real quick, uh, clumsy found Joe City's Reverb Nation. Do you update and have a SoundCloud? Probably not. Nah, I I did that a long time ago. I'm just rocking with Instagram right now. If you follow me on Instagram, I got a few beats up there or whatever, you know, little mini videos or whatever. Um, I haven't uploaded nothing, nothing new in a minute, but there'll be some stuff up there coming soon. Okay. That's what's up. So, yeah, if you want to, you guys want to follow Joe, follow him on IG. Um, follow us on IG. Follow me on IG. 
Jennifer O'Jenny, so Chuck oh, and we're all there. We're all, we're all putting up stuff. Stuff. <laughs> Come look yeah. at our stuff. Stuff in general. Yeah, stuff in general. Right. So, well, Joe, thank you for coming through tonight. Appreciate you coming on the show, man. Can't wait to hear the new music. I appreciate you having me, guys. Yeah, man. Yeah, anytime. Man. Anytime you want to come back and and pimp the new stuff, let us know. You know. Oh uh, yeah, you'll be hearing from me soon. Talk about it. yeah, Sweet. dope. That's what's up. All right, and 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 before we close out the show, we're gonna play that uh, play the uh, the joint one more time. Uh, Ask your mama. Yeah. <laughs> Ask your mama. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Take care. You're welcome, bro. You too. Okay. Peace, Joe. Peace. Right, peace. Oh, I cut him off quick. Uh, my bad, Joe. Oh, my bad. Didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, me and thanks, me. Click. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> God damn it. Ah. <laughs> uh, anyway. I'll just bring him back. Jeez. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Say goodbye. Say goodbye <laughs> to that way, Joe. All right, y'all take it easy, man. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. Peace. I'm not touching right. anything. Peace. All right. <laughs> See you. See you. Not touching anything. Yeah, Don't put awesome. me on the big screen. Dude, Boy, trust me. I was t-shirt. not. Yeah, I wasn't trying to do that anyway. Oh, look at her. I was the, not. Uh, bibbity, with the bibbity-bobbity-boo over there. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Please leave. I swear, dude, you got to get that 14.4 modem upgraded to at least 56.6, 28. It's got the dial up. It know, is noise. not. It's a it's brand grainy. new. It's supposed to be crazy fast. Well, it's crazy. You know, whatever. Shit. Whatever. You know, that, was, that was so perfect because right <laughs> as you tried to say that it's not slow, it broke like, up on us. So it was like, yeah, it's <laughs> not. You know. It's not. Sound yeah, like auto tune whatever. over there. Whatevs. So there you go, folks. Joe City, go check out. Joe City's dope. Yep, Joe City's dope. Can't wait to check out the new music. Yep. Yeah, I had to. I had to put somebody in timeout tonight. I don't know what the fuck was going on with her. Yeah, so. she's having a lot of chatting with herself. She, I guess. Yeah, I think she was having a stroke. It's all yeah. good though. Keyboard strokes. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Key, keyboard stroking. Yeah, that's right. The best best quote of the night is "little scratch and sniff." Hands down. Yep. You outdid yourself that with that one, Jennifer. Yeah, did yourself. She with can't that hear one. you because she's all I pixelated. Can't. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's like watching a kung fu movie. Shut up. Yeah. Speaking of which, man, I tell you this new tr- this new trend <laughs> over on Netflix. Listen, I don't mind watching uh, foreign films with subtitles, mm-hmm. but don't do a fake ass American voiceover on that shit. It's so terrible. Like the voices that they like, it's not even fit this character. It's terrible. Oh, like dubbing. Yeah, it's terrible. Well, dubbing has always classically been bad. You know the uh, the. What's funny about it is I'm one of the few people that likes dubbing, not because of the actual dubbing, but because I like to watch the shots. And if uh-huh. I have to read subtitles, I'm oh. not paying attention to the visuals. Yeah, but that makes that's sense. A, that's me as a filmmaker or pers- personal preference. Right. But I get, yeah, dubbing is usually <laughs> really, <laughs> really bad. Really? Dude, dude, let's pull yeah. that up. <laughs> <laughs> He, the the fainting goat rises from from his slumber to yep, to, to give us to that comment. One. Yes, to, I love it. To comment on me pop locking. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There you go. Regina B's got it. She said it's always the same voices. It is. It's like they they're like, look, come here and read these. Read these parts. <laughs> You're like really. Uh, come on. I gotta I gotta get some more. I gotta get some new Yo MTV Raps cards. So send me the gum. Sure. Yeah. You remember yeah, that gum you get in the cards? It was like a little oblong and mm-hmm. you smack it on a table and you break a table. Like, yes. Just like yep. it'd break your teeth. Yep. Okay. Oh, that, Jenny, don't act like you didn't know. That Knackworth actually gave me some. I don't know what I did with them. I've got two other packs. I just got to find the them. audio two card. 
right? Got to find the audio too, card. Good call. What more can I say? Yep. Top villain. I'm sure there's a positive K. MC Light. Yeah, I don't have any ladies in here in this in this pack. Man, you got me Black on that pack. Uh, on that uh, Paramount Plus though. Watching those old episodes. Yo, man, it's so dope. I forgot that those episodes were as long as they were. Like, and I was you know watching what? one with NWA, and I was like, damn, when's this going to be over? I was like, shit, that was almost 50 minutes. No, you know what? And then some of them are, like, because I watched the um, the Public Enemy one, uh-huh. you know, the Live Friday, where they came out and did Can't Trust It at the end. And that one was, mm. like, so they don't have, like, the entire episodes for all the for all of them because that one was, like, short. It was only, like, 29 minutes. Hmm. And they showed some of the videos and then that. So I don't know if it was a rights issue or licensing issues or what. Hmm. But, um, um, well, Dre, at least you at least you have the Terminator X card. So yeah. At least there's that. Did you leave them in someone's trunk? Or, <laughs> or house they Poor got Joe. Shot? Poor yeah. Joe's, like, larceny and... <laughs> came home and everything was gone you know <laughs> dude there's nothing worse than having to replace your your music well except you know what i had yeah, i had a crap ton of albums and things that that even had my name on the backs of them and whatever in the credits yeah mm. yeah but they quit selling those victrolas a long time before like vinyl <laughs> came out you got rid of them <laughs> they're gone they're just gone. Oh. Uh, I don't know yeah. whatever happened to them moving multiple yeah. times. It's just one of those things where it's like, what happened to that box? I don't know. Yeah. If only records could talk. Like, think about, you know, like oh. records have been so many places dragged around, been in basements, floods. You know what's seen you, a lot. You know what's cool? I have a <laughs> um, 78. I still have some of those that were my grandparents. Um, but um, I have, I, uh, I think it's a, it, it's either a Beatles record. It's either mm. um, rubber soul. Yeah, I think it's rubber soul. And if you look at it, if you, if you shine the light on and look at it at an angle, mm-hmm. you can see the indentation where I had, when I was in like second grade, I had, put the record on while I did my homework and I must have put my homework on top of the oh on top God. of the, the uh, so sleeve. Created a... Yeah, so there's it, the indent of my my spelling homework from like 1982 or something crazy like that. Man. Yeah, it's bugged. My brother would have had your head. Oh, I, I'm I'm ready to go back and kick my little ass now. I'm like, what the fuck mm. did you do that for? asshole but, do you still um, have it yeah yeah i still have it yeah you need to put a piece of paper over it and just gently and rub, rub across it. Yeah, to yeah. see what it, see what you were learning yeah yeah, yeah. oh i could I, yeah i could i could actually tell you because you can kind of read it hang on oh look at this bonus <laughs> bonus <laughs> i'm getting excited jenny see i okay well is that what that looks like um my, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, look, uh, okay, David. I can see my name, David. October 6, 1981. Wow. Yeah. So what grade was were you in then? So that would have been, um, yeah, like second grade. Yeah. So you, that, that wasn't your album then? That was just one that was around the house? No, no, this was mine. Yeah, my, wow. I, uh, my grandmother... I was visiting with my grandparents and she took me to Monroeville mall and said, she'd buy me an album. And it was between this and the white album. And I got this one because it had something, there was something on it that I wanted and I don't remember what it was. Maybe the word, because I was like that song, but um, yeah. Well, that's strong grabbing that over white album. Yeah. 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 Better choice. Yeah. White album's good, but it's just kind of, uh, um, so I was, yeah, I spelled the word mirror. I oh, see that. Uh, <laughs> give, um, yeah, look oh my funny. God. I had pretty good, I had pretty good, uh, 
spelling penmanship. Term. Pen penmanship yes although it was it in looked... cursive or was it print printed um oh, okay although it does look like i had a backwards a on cast which is weird because i have an a in my name and so i don't understand hmm. that jenny why did y'all even come up with cursive back then what in the actual? Yeah, I don't know. I guess. You oh can yeah, kind of you, can you can. You can see yeah. it. You can yeah. totally see it. Oh my yeah. god! Isn't that crazy? Mm. That's funny. yeah. The word is the sh the word is the joint, bro. Dre Maze. Yes, the word. That's the joint. I fucking love that song. You know, I I made C Doc very very envious when I told him that my brother still has every Beatles album like still you're... in their plastic. Wow. Yep. I I applaud his efforts. That's that's dope. That's awesome. Like and nope. I can remember being a, a, a little kid and, and of course anybody who doesn't know I'm a preacher's kid. But so my brother would come home with um a, a new album and we all had to sit and listen to it to make sure that he could, he was allowed <laughs> to listen to it. Wow. And so I heard every Beatles album ever. Don't that's let awesome. Joe, don't let Joe hold those. That's a, right. that's, that's a, yeah. Right. That's a, my kids are already like, cause I told them once I'm like, you know, you're just, Years down the line, after I'm gone, you guys can, you know, have my records. And so Rocco's all like, always coming in there. He's like, hey, Dad, you know, when you die, I'm taking your records. I'm like, fuck, man. <laughs> he's just that's waiting. What, yeah, he's that's like, what Harry does. Days. I'm like, he's like, seriously, uh, you know, what time you got? You yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Hey, Dad. I, Irie comes out. She's like, um, I get the truck when mommy dies. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah it's uh, like dad I, dad when you die morning. can i have your ghostbusters book no dude get out of here Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh good lord mar, mar oh, there you mar go mar <laughs> <laughs> yes i figured you'd be the first one to sell them babe but, mm. <laughs> she's like i'm getting rid of all this shit it's musty yep, yep. <laughs> Well, well, it's it's been a great show, as as always. And um, do we know who's coming on next week? Do we have a guest next week yet? No, we sure don't. Oh, okay. Mm. So we'll get we'll get back on and we'll get back on that. I think it's Ice Cube or DJ oh, Pooh, Ice T, or Ice T. <laughs> mm. Uh huh. One dollar per bin. Don't you dare! Wow. wow. Oh Mar, my I'll god, you, why the hell do you think hundred dollars for all of it? I'll take Jeez. the whole lot. Hundred bucks. Right, right now. now. Babe. <laughs> I got I got eighty dollar records in there. Yes. All right. He needs to play the song. Clumsy clumsy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. Clumsy's like, listen, motherfuckers, I, I don't yes. want to listen to yeah, y'all talk. Like, Shut up. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> care about any of the three of you. I need to order pizza anyway. Yeah. All right. So Chuckify, Jennifer O'Jenny, thank you so much as always. And to everybody watching on the replay. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Real quick, before we get to the song, this episode, as always, is brought to you by the Spit Slam Record Label Group. The Spit Slam Record Label Group, a Chuck D situation. Catch us on your favorite streaming platform, on Bandcamp, or visit our official web store at spitslamrecords.com. All releases are available digitally or on CD, with select titles available on vinyl and cassette. The Spit Slam Record Label Group. Throwback to the future sound. Back to the future sound. I don't even want to discuss what you were just doing off. Yeah, I was hoping you were going to keep Vogue in there. And I was uh, Vogue, right? baby. Come what on, the hell? shit. That's what's up. Um, but apparently, Mara says, sold, you pick up, and you pack. Yeah, I'll head up there tonight. I'm not dead yet. What the hell? Not um, yet. I wouldn't go to not sleep yet. tonight. Let Let's us get off. <laughs> right? Let us get off the street. You, did she bring you a drink during the show? No, she didn't. Oh, okay. So. All right. All right. I'm okay for the minute. So. All right. Good.
Um, if you enjoy the episode, so please funny. like and subscribe. And we will be back next week with another episode of It's Sea Doc again. And the taking us out <laughs> like is it. Ask it. You want to tell them who's what's the song, Jennifer? Ask your mama. <laughs> Spin forth. Produced by Joe City, ladies and gentlemen. Produced by Joe City. Yo. Big up my man Joe City. Virginia stand up. One of the original. Yeah, food front crew. Drop a track. Got the pen moving, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Abracadabra, smoking mirrors. I approach the mic, rappers disappearing. I can rock it like watch you catch the spirit. I be speaking in tongues with the holy lyrics. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was rapping off top with the skills so ill, they like, no, he's not. Seem to believe that I flipped it then flop. Hiding in plain sight between the hip and the hop. So let's go. Follow me, follow me. They can take a bite, but they still couldn't swallow me. Indigestion, the end of the lesson. Don't fuck with the God in the middle of blessings. Don't fuck with the squad after smoking the session. I might spit some shit to give your girl an erection. Oops. Now the cat's out the bag. Inebriated flows, man. The rap's out the flag. I've been on the grind since 1989, man. I know you heard the story. I know you heard the story. Bitcoin, eat dollars or pesos. Whether my teeth rotten, gold plated or fake gold. Uh-huh. Long as the beat rock and be safe and just stay low. Dodging bullets. Everybody's a marksman, but hardly pull it. Uh-huh. Tried the quick draw, but you probably couldn't. Uh-huh. Never crossed your mind that you probably shouldn't. Never crossed the line. Another way I could put it. I got places I keep rappers and they heavily wooded. Listen. I go dumb till my face go numb, I mean, I guess wrong till they serve the coleslaw, then I take a walk in the spirit in the fog, never to be seen until they call Stephen King or write up a new scene with what's craving the flip screen, either way some dead rappers show up on the screen, listen, I've been on the grind since 1989, man, I know you heard the story, I know you heard the story, I've been on the grind, watch the time fly by. again.